Hello everyone, this is Teacher Juvie and I will be your guide for today's lesson. Let us discuss the data involving two variables. Analyze how the given data are collected, organized, and presented. So, let's start this lesson with the situation. Ivan loves to help picking pineapples from their family's farm. Every day, he picks pineapples. Let us help him count how many pineapples he gathers for one week. So, ang kukunin natin ngayon is kung ilang pineapples ang kanyang naani sa loob ng isang linggo. So, using an illustration, ipapakita natin yung naaning pineapples ni Ivan sa loob ng isang linggo. So, ito yan. So, from that illustration, gagawaan natin siya ng table para mas maipakita natin or mas makita natin yung figures o yung mga bilang ng pineapples na nakuha niya sa loob ng isang linggo. Okay, so we have days here, nung Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, hanggang Sunday. So, yun yung isang linggo, di ba? So, nung Monday, ang nakuha niyang pineapples ay 12. Then, nung Tuesday, 10. Nung Wednesday ay 9. Nung Thursday ay 11. Nung Friday, 15. Saturday, 20. And nung Sunday ay naka-18 pineapples siya. So, yan yung uh, kaninang uh, fiad illustration. Pinakita lang natin siya using a table. Okay, so to analyze the situation, we are going to answer the following question. So, pwede nating masagot yung mga tanong na ito base din sa table na ating ginawa. So, what is the data all about? On what day is the least number of pineapples gathered? What is the greatest number of pineapples gathered? So, based on sa table, we will answer these questions. So, what is the data all about? So, the data is about number of pineapples gathered by Ivan for one week. Then, on what day is the least number of pineapples gathered? So, anong araw may pinakamababang nakuhang pineapple si Ivan? So, ang sagot ay Wednesday. Then, what is the greatest number of pineapples gathered? So, ano yung pinakamataas or pinakamaraming bilang ng pineapples ang nakuha ni Ivan? So, 20 pineapples. Yan yung pinaka maraming bilang ng pineapples na nakuha niya. Okay, next questions. How many more pineapples gathered on Monday than on Tuesday? And what is the difference between the number of pineapples collected on Thursday and Friday? So, unahin muna natin tong how many more pineapples. Nung Monday... Ang nag-gather niya is 12 pineapples. Then, on Tuesday, ang nakuha niya is 10 pineapples. Therefore, kapag kinuha natin or sinabtrack natin yung nakuha niya nung uh, Monday sa nakuha niya nung Tuesday, masabi natin na there are 2 more pineapples gathered on Mon Monday than on Tuesday. Next, what is the difference between the number of pineapples collected on Thursday and Friday? So, yun yung difference nila. So, it means magsasubject din tayo. So, on Thursday, 11 yung pineapples na nakuha niya. Then, on Friday ay 15. So, kukunin lang natin yung difference nila sa so 15 minus 11. So, the answer is, there are 4 pineapples collected on Friday than on Tuesday. So, this time... Ang gagawin na natin is magko-construct tayo ng horizontal or vertical bar graph gamit ang mga steps na ito. Okay? So, based dun sa ating data na kinuha kanina, i-co-construct, gagawa natin siya ng bar graph. So, specifically, ang gagawin natin is uh, horizontal bar graph. So, paano mag-construct ng horizontal bar graph? Bakit horizontal? Kasi yung mga bars niya nakahiga. Pag sinabing horizontal, pahiga. Pag vertical, patayo. Okay, so yung first step natin in constructing 
a horizontal bar graph is first draw the vertical and horizontal axis. So, ito yung pinaka-foundation ng isang graph. So, pag sinabing vertical patayo at ang horizontal ay pahika. So, ito yung dalawang axis natin. Then, next. Step 2. Label the horizontal and vertical axis. So, lagyan natin ng pangalan yung ating horizontal and vertical axis. So, paano? So, yung pangalan na ilalagay natin is based doon sa data. Okay, so, yung var dalawang variables na na-involve doon sa ating data or situation is yung number uh, days of the week and yung number of pineapple. So, yun yung dalawang uh, variables natin. Okay? So, in-name natin yung ating horizontal axis na days of the week at yung ating number at yung ating vertical axis na number of pineapples. Okay, so yung mga days in the in uh, of the week are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday hanggang Sunday. So yan yung ating vertical and horizontal axis. Next Step 3, find the highest number in the data. So, dun sa ating data kanina, hanapin natin yung pinakamataas na number. So, dito, ang pinakamataas is 20. Okay, so 20. Bakit kailangan na alam natin ang pinakamataas na number? Kasi gagamitin natin yan for the step 4, make a scale from 0 to the highest number in the table. So, since 20 ang ating pinakamataas na number, so, gagawa tayo ng scale. So, from 0 to 20. So, pwede tayong mag-skip counting lang. Ang interval natin is by 5. So, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. So, yan yung pwede natin ilagay doon sa number of pineapples. Okay? Then, step 5, Uh, draw horizontal or vertical bars to represent the number of pineapples gathered each day. So, ipaplot na natin dito sa ating graph yung mga number ng pineapples na nakuha niya. So, dahil nga tayo ay gumagawa ng horizontal bar graph, so, pahiga yung ating gagawin. Okay? So, nung Monday, ang nakuha niya is 12. So, yan. ba? Lagpas dapat ng 10. Then, nung Tuesday, nakuha niya is 10. So, dapat itapat nyo yung Tuesday at yung 10. Dapat magkatapat sila. Okay, then, Wednesday, nakuha niya is 9. So, may isang guhit pa bago mag 10. So, yun. Huwag nyo itatapat sa 10 kasi pag nilagay nyo sa 10 yun, mali na yun. Okay? Then, nung Thursday, nakuha niya is 11. So, lagpas ka lang ng isa dun sa ating 10. Okay, then, nung Friday, ang nakuha niya is 15. So, dapat nakatapat siya sa 15. And, nung sa Saturday, ang nakuha niya is 20. So, dapat nakatapat siya sa 20. Then, nung Sunday, ang nakuha niya is 18. So, yan. So, ito na ngayon yung ating nabuong horizontal bar graph. So, diba, napakadali lang. For our last step, ang gagawin natin is write the title of the bar graph. Kailangan laging may title yung bar graph na ginagawa nyo. Hindi lang basta pwedeng gawa lang kayo ng gawa, ba? So, yung title naman, makikita naman natin dun sa uh, situation na pinresent kanina. So, yung title ng ating bar graph is the number of pineapples gathered by Ivan for one week. So, makukuha din natin yung title dito sa ating mga label. So, the number of pineapples gathered by Ivan, Ivan for one week. So, yun yung ating title ng bar graph. So, that's how we construct a horizontal bar graph. So, what is a graph? A graph tells a story about the data or information given. So, yung graph mismo yung nagsasabi ng story about dun sa data or information lang na binigay. So, binibigyan niya to ng flavor. So, meron tayong isang uri ng graph, which is a bar graph. A bar graph is one way of 
of presenting set of data which can either be vertical or horizontal in form. So, yung ginawa natin kanina is horizontal ang horizontal bar graph dahil nakahiga yung mga bars. It can be used to show and compare in information. Then, meron tayong tinatawag din na double bar graphs. Bar graphs, it helps us to compare or present more than one kind of information instead of just one by using bars. Double bar graphs can be vertical or horizontal. So, yung ginawa nating bar graph kanina na horizontal, pwede natin siyang uh, maging magawang double bar graph kung binago yung situation. Halimbawa, kinompare natin yung nakuha niyo. Nakuhang pa yung apple ni Ivan doon sa kanyang kapatid. Halimbawa, ganun. So, mapagkukumpara natin yung kanilang nakuhang uh, mga pineapples. So, ang gagamitin na natin doon is double bar graph. So, dahil isa lang yung kinuha natin, uh, isa lang yung taong involved doon sa, sa data natin. So, single bar graph or, isang, or bar graph lang yung ating nagawa. So, wala tayong kinukuhang comparison. So, let's proceed on this activity. We are going to construct a vertical bar graph with the given data in the table below. So, para malaman nyo yung pagkakaiba ng horizontal bar graph sa vertical bar graph, so, gagawa tayo ngayon ng vertical bar graph. So, ito yung ating mga data. So, the title of the, this table is melons sold during weekdays. Then, sa first column natin, Nakalagay dyan yung mga number of melons, then yung day naman, yung nasa second column, from Monday to Friday. So, weekdays lang siya. Ibig sabihin yung mga araw na may pasok. Hindi, hindi kasama yung Saturday and Sunday. Of course, to analyze the situation or the data, we are going to answer the following questions. So, we can answer these questions using the table. How many melons were sold on Wednesday? So, the answer is 24 melons. So, magbe-base kayo niyan dun sa table. Okay, then what day has the highest number of melons sold? So, based on the table, so Tuesday yung pinakamataas na araw na maraming nabiling melon. Then, what day has the least number of melons sold? So, anong araw ang pinakakaunti lang yung nabiling or nabentang melon. So, the answer is Friday. How many melons were sold on Monday and Tuesday? So, dito tinatanong kung ilan yung nabenta nung Monday and Tuesday. Ibig sabihin, pagsasamahin natin yung dalawang data or dalawang yung dalawang data na 16 at 26. 16 nung Monday, i-add natin sa 26. So, the answer here is 42 melons. Okay? Then next, how many melons were sold on weekdays? So, ilang melon ang nabenta ng weekdays? So, ibig sabihin from Monday to Friday. So, i-add lang natin yung mga figures doon o yung mga data doon. So, we will get the answer of 100 melons. Okay, so this time, we will now constructing our vertical bar graph. So, ano nga uli yung first step? Ang first step natin is yung ating magdodrawing tayo ng vertical and horizontal axis. Vertical is patayo and horizontal ay pahiga. Then, label the two axes. So, yung at, dahil nga vertical ang ating gagawin, vertical bar graph. So, yung ating vertical axis, dyan nakalagay yung number of melons. Then, yung ating horizontal axis, yan yung ilalagay natin yung mga days. Okay? Then, Mag-scale na tayo. So, dun sa ating table kanina, ang nakuha nating pinakamataas na number is 26. So, from 0 to 30 ang ginawa ko kasi pasok naman dyan yung uh, 26. So, interval of 5 to. So, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, up to 30. Then, lagay natin yung mga days. So, from Monday till Friday. Then, again, using this table, ipaplot na natin yung mga data dito sa ating bar graph. So, nung Monday, ang nakuha niyang melon ay 16. So, lalagpas lang siya ng isang guhit doon sa 15, diba? So, itatapat nyo muna yung Monday, then, itapat nyo siya doon sa 16. So, dyan yung nag-drawingan ng bar graph. Then, nung Tuesday, ang nakuha niya is 26. So, again, mag 
isang, isang guhit lang ang iaangat nyo. So, sa 25, isang guhit iangat nyo. So, para dun sa Tuesday. Then, nung Wednesday, 24. So, so isang guhit naman ang ang baba doon sa 25, okay? So, doon para maitapat natin na 24 yon. So, nung uh, Thursday, nakuha niya is 20. So, dapat sakto siya doon sa 20. Then, nung Friday, is 14. So, isang guhit lang yung baba niya doon sa 15. Okay. So, ito na ngayon yung ating constructed vertical bar graph. So, nakita nyo, kaya siya tinabog na vertical dahil nakatayo ang kanyang mga bars. Okay. So, ang pinaka last step is, papangalanan na natin yung ating bar graph based doon sa ating data. So, the title of this bar graph is Melons Sold During Weekdays. Thanks for watching this video. Hit like if you learned something from this video and don't forget to subscribe on this channel. Thank you so much.